Let's see here, we have... Oh boy, right, Baron is Baron. Forgot about that. It's not a whole lot on it. It's it's appropriate for the name. So we have Anarchid and Hokomoko over to the northwest, and Google Frog and Orphilius over to the southeast. And don't let the name fool you, Orphilius, while they are a member of the GBC clan, they are not playing on the GBC team. As Google Frog is not GBC themselves. So we are gonna be seeing very small box starts here. Not sure if that's correct. So, looks like or well, what are they going for factories? I don't see any signs of what they're going to go for. I can imagine Anarchy Hogamoka once again going for some cheese, possibly a drop. And Anarchy going for the jump out factory. Okay. Hokomoko currently not choosing what to go for. I No, there's no drop. Shield bot factory. Shield and jump bots. Not an unusual setup. So overall here, pretty standard play coming in from the GBC team. Ophelia is going for Shieldbot Factory. Google Frog not choosing their factory yet. Both. Okay, there we go. Shield and Cloaky. Interesting mix. And already we off the bat have just some builders coming in. So Anarchid going essentially Puppy Mod. Oh, Puppy Moderator Jack. Or Puppy Moderator Placeholder Jack. That's... Just going for everything. Everything but Archangels and Sumos. Just just the platter option. Just the sample platter. That's what they're going for. Okamoko going for a more typical setup. Bandits and dirt bags. Dirt bags for scouting and bandits for actually dealing damage. On the other hand, Google Frog pretty much just getting a couple glaives for harassment and otherwise not doing too much, while Hokomoko at this point a couple bandits for defense. Or sorry. Orphelius, a couple bandits for defense, and that's about it. So not a whole lot to say here. I mean, really, it's pretty typical play, at least from the Southeast team. From the GBC team, it is definitely odd. Just this combination of things here. The jump bot, shield bot is not something you see a whole lot. Go work out okay. And Hokomoka winning the first skirmish of bandits right now, so Orphelius a little bit lacking in troops at the moment. I mean... There's not a whole lot that can be done with that. It's not like Hokomoko can just come in and start dealing with things. But still, kind of short on troops at the moment. Bit of a problem. Or at least a potential problem. As it stands, though, not really sure what the GBC's plan is. Like I said, they're kind of going for all the different jump bot units. Nothing really focused on. And the Southwest team is... Oh my god. They have a bit more focus to them. I mean, granted, they're also... Okay, the warriors are there to deal with the bandits, obviously. As for dealing with all the jump bot stuff, I mean, how are you supposed to know that happens? That's the only advantage I can think of the way that Anarchid's doing things, is that... How would you know? Oh, there's Firewalkers. I mean, that's what I said. Everything but Sumos. And Archangels. And Scuttles. But yeah, everything else is... There's ones on everything. I'm, I'm not... I was not exaggerating. Otherwise... I'd say Southeast is probably a bit of an advantage here. I mean, the one thing that's going for Anarchid right now is that it's going to be difficult for Southeast team to deal with the composition. But on the other hand... I mean, if... Like, Jack... Okay, Jack's kind of special and unique, but... Placeholder moderator typically goes together, so if you can deal with one part of it, you can generally deal with the whole thing. Puppies are just a matter of having units that are tough enough to withstand them, because there's not a whole lot of them. At this point, the main threat is Hokomoko. Like Hokomoko's bandits. And at this point, we'd have warriors for for Google Frog, so overall, it's actually still kind of in Southeast team's favor. At this point, really, it does feel like a very standard match. I mean, this is Baron. Fair warning, Baron is a map that typically kind of 
gets a lot of static defenses and a lot of slow, more trenchy play. Given that the center of the map is basically a giant trench, that should be no surprise. But that is kind of how it goes. Orphili is trying to set up a bit of a fire base on the southwest, or yeah, the southwest side. But on the GBC side of that trench, if that gets a foothold, that's actually going to be rather difficult to dis... Well, not super difficult to dislodge, but it is still going to provide some position for the Southeast team to actually get their forces up the hill and deal meaningful damage. Okamoko looks like they're... Yeah, they're going really for a roundabout attack. Southeast team does spot it. And it is known. Oops, there we are. Yeah, it's on radar and everything. They know. Southeast team is fully aware. Bandits are just going to be intercepted here. Warriors going into position. That is removing some of the forces from the front lines. The Orphilius does kind of have a decent ish grasp on the front lines but the warriors being moved back it looks like they're possibly going to be moved to flank these bandits just to get rid of them and the pyro coming in here i mean what is anarchid doing i feel like kokomoko is carrying most of the weight of the team right now and several bandits going down at no cost to google frog whatsoever about half the bandits in that little group there four or five bandits going down that's a blow that's not nothing. And Google Frog taking the northeast side of the map as well. So already the southeast team getting a pretty good economic advantage. And now the southwest also going to the southeast team. So the southeast team's economy is going to be very strong. And I still don't know what Anarchid's up to. I mean, at the moment, Anarchid, well, they have a moderator and a jack and a placeholder. I don't see any puppies. The pyro, I'm pretty sure, got killed. So, what? What? I don't know what Anarchid was trying to do there. And Hokomoko's commander, under heavy fire, should be jumping away. There we go. There's the jump. Getting out of that threat zone. But yeah, that's, this is not a great position. I mean, once this convict starts setting up economy, once it starts setting up metal extractors, that's basically going to be it. And a couple sides coming into the northeast, that should probably seal the deal. They'll get rid of a couple metal extractors, maybe some of the defenses. After that happens, what is there? I mean, the Firewalker is basically the entire GBC's economy, or at least Anarchy's entire economy, all being poured into one unit. And, okay, on this map, a Firewalker makes sense. I don't disagree with the unit itself. Just the fact that it came from building every single jump bot unit except for Scuttle, Archangel, and Sumo. All of which are situational. Well, Sumo is just super expensive, but the other two are situational. I mean, Archangel's useless against ground, and Scuttle is basically only an anti-heavy tool. Everything else, however, that be practical was built. And now it's pure Firewalker. So now we have a strategy. Anarchy going pure Firewalker and getting that Firewalker cut to pieces by sides. Although, nope, Firewalker's cut to pieces by size. That's just, that's all there is to it. The size get revealed, but that's, that's all that happens. And at this point, Hokomoko trying to stop Orphilius from taking the southwest side of the map, which Orphilius is finally building up. Google Frog having already taken the northeast side. Southeast team with a five metal per second advantage. And on this map, that's meaningful. I mean, I realize that's generally meaningful, but it's also kind of small. On this map, though, it's kind of hard to even get that. And as it is, GBC's only got that... They're only that close because of Reclaim. Their raw economy is actually considerably weaker. And with the Scythe just roaming around in their base, that Scythe could very easily just deal with everything. At least everything that's not well defended. Which is a fair amount, actually. This defender is not really all that effective against the Scythe. So that coming in there, you get rid of a metal extractor here and a metal extractor over here. I mean, the northwest side of the map is pretty open to that scythe. And of course, more size... No, Step Spectre is forthcoming. That is the option here. At this point, though, the southwest being the primary battleground. And southeast team needs to hold that. The economy is getting more and more even. Actually, it's even right now. Of course, GBC Reclaim is part of that, but Reclaim is an important part of the game. 
So despite the fact that that is temporary as an economy source, it still exists. It is still providing metal. And Southeast team actually not using all the metal they had to begin with. They are really going to need to get some caretakers or something. I mean, the thing is, the one thing GBC has going for them right now is actually improved production. Their production setup right now is definitely better than Southeast team. The reclaim... Still kind of low. Not totally running out, but still kind of low. However... Wait, did they just... No, that can't be right. I thought they broke the wreckage in order to get more wreckage out of the wreckage. I don't think this would happen. At any rate, Southeast team with the economic advantage and now pretty much taking this area. I expect that Hokomoko will be going for another push to the Southwest. But the Northeast is pretty well secured. Google Frog's got that on lock and this assault here might actually end the game. There's basically no defenses. Nothing that'll deal with four warriors coming down your base, bearing down on you like this. So after this, that's... Sheesh, a bunch of dirtbags coming down here, possibly to... No, the dirtbags are going down to the center of the map. They're not being used to distract these warriors. Nothing is. There is the one site the dirtbags might be looking for it. And Hokomoko's forces... Locked in a bit of a stalemate with Orphelius. Hokomoko does have the high ground, but they aren't going to be able to make use of it. They can't really get close enough. The ranges aren't big enough for it to make a difference. And Warriors coming in, getting a bit distracted by Dirtbags, but there's no static defenses, so the Dirtbags really don't have a whole lot of meaningful threat. On the other hand, the Warriors are massively meaningful. Anarchid's factory is done. Possibly Hokomoko's as well. Hokomoko getting some bandits up, but no, this is over. This is all over. And at the same time... Orphelius going to the southwest. It looks like they are trying to push up the hill. Or at least trying to set up to push up the hill. That's the hard part right now. They can't really push up the hill. They can try. They'll take a lot of losses. At this point, Hokomoko and Orphelius have roughly the same size of force. Anarchist Commander, the only thing that's saving the day right now. Level 4 Commander. Double Beam Laser with Personal Shield is the only thing that's saved that. But at this point, Anarchist's got nothing. They have their Commander... They have one constable. That's it. That is absolutely it. Southwest, Southeast team just needs one good push, and these warriors might just be it. Anarchist commander with the, well, the double beam laser. These warriors, if they're close enough, it should be fine, but they're not that close. They're not close enough. They need to get much closer. If all six warriors need to be together, attacking the commander at once in order to deal any meaningful damage. There is auto repair on top of this. Along with the extra health, Along with the personal shield, Anarchid's commander basically trying to be used as a one-unit army to turn this game around. And I wouldn't be surprised if it did. And unfortunately, both the warriors coming in a line. Google Frog getting cloaked thanks to a nice sneak beat here. But I don't think that'll be enough. Anarchid will probably figure out where Google Frog's commander is. I mean, this commander assault... That's a problem. Orphelius is still able to take the southwest, though. Hokomoko basically getting no assistance from the teammate. And this is very much a last stand from Anarchid. I mean, Anarchid right now, they have their commander. Hokomoko has a little bit more to their army. You know, a few rogues, a few racketeers, their own commander, which is not that upgraded. Just a machine gun. So, I mean, Anarchid's commander getting disabled. Okay, this is, this is where Anarchid's whole strategy is going to fall down. If those racketeers can maintain the disable or the disarm rather on Anarchist Commander, if these warriors push in, and there's quite a few of them already. Yeah, eight warriors. If those eight warriors push into the north base, that could seal the deal. That could end the game. I mean, Anarchist Commander had a chance to turn things around, but racketeers. Racketeers are a thing. Orphelius' donation was well received. And there we go. Warrior with eraser. That is that is the endgame strategy here. Sneak in a bunch of warriors. Now, I should point out that there was radar, so this is kind of known. I mean, they don't know where the position is now, but this was kind of known. So, yeah, this... How many warriors are here? Yeah, eight warriors with an eraser. Very clever. I mean, the eight warriors on their own, without the eraser, could have just knocked down the door. 
But with the eraser, it's going to be even more meaningful. It's just going to... There's nothing that can be done. And getting revealed, but that's close enough. Still a nice surprise attack. We'll be able to get rid of Pokemoko's factory, and that'll basically stop anything from the GBC side. They can't produce without a factory, and they have no factories anymore. Then their economy is going to be going down pretty hard, too. So this is basically it. The eraser is going to be just jump back to. These warriors can then move around to wherever the heck they'd like. The real goal, of course, would be to get rid of Anarchid's commander. If Anarchid loses their commander, that's game. That is absolutely game. Okamoko cannot easily push out. They can kind of push out, but they're not in a great position to do so. An Anarchist Commander getting hit hard. All the Warriors up in at once with Racketeers as well. To help get rid of the Commander and a Roach? Whose Roach was that? That was Hokomoko's Roach. Okay, that was the right person. I'm thinking, Hokomoko, if it wasn't you with that Roach, that would be really bad. But Hokomoko on point, getting that Roach before the Shield Pot Factory goes down. Saving Anarchid's commander and allowing for a possible revenge push. I don't... I don't know if that'll happen, though. Hokumoko is still under a lot of fire. Hokumoko's commander should be able to escape if need be. I mean, there's not really under a main... any meaningful threat. Although, I mean, if Hokumoko's commander doesn't walk out of the way fast enough, that could still be a problem. Hokumoko is still losing the position on the southwest. Really, it's all this commander. All Anarchist's commander. That's the only thing there. Hokumoko's commander is about to get killed. These warriors go... Put, at least, if the warriors push for it... But yeah, there's... Almost all the map belongs to the Southeast team right now. There's... That's all I have to say. Hokumoko, without a commander anymore. Anarchist's commander about to go down. Very likely about to go down. And it looks like... G oh, yeah, GBC throws in the towel. Anarchist's commander. Good try. Really good try there, but yeah, that was all they could really do. They didn't have a whole lot of forces. I really don't understand the jump bot thing. That didn't work at all. That made no sense. I've I just don't know. I'm at a complete loss. The income was or given value of wow, I was all over the place. Southeast team had an advantage from the start, pretty much. Same with metal used. Metal used was much more even, but still, it's like it just worked out so much better for the Southeast team. They just had the advantage. They just had a proper strategy going forward, and I don't know what Anarchid was planning on doing. I mean, the Firewalkers made sense. Everything else, I have no idea. The Firewalkers made a lot of sense, though. The Scythes made even more sense to get rid of those Firewalkers and stop... Because the thing is, like I said, this map is all about defenses. And that means artillery becomes fairly powerful. Which means if you predict artillery and are able to deal with it before it deals meaningful damage you get farther and farther ahead as a result. So yeah, we're apparently going to be going on to an elimination match. Or elimination, not match, but elimination bracket of the tournament. Apparently. But this is what the, thing, the situation I was talking about, because now... If we don't have an elimination match, which I expect we will, but if we don't, Black Dutch and Sigero are tied. And 400 and Cortez the Killer, or Zen for whichever one wants to, I guess, is also tied for third place. So really it's going to come down to what happens next. If Sortel decides to go for an elimination, or just go for a tiebreaker round. I don't... I don't really care either way, but I feel like an elimination round would just completely fatigue the players. At this point, everyone's played everyone already. It's just that it hasn't worked out in a way that's led to clear results. But everybody's played everybody. And it looks like... No, it looks like we're going to elimination. Okay, single elimination as the finisher here. All right, so I don't know if we're gonna have a break between, but 
this is going to be... Wow, okay, immediately. No breaks at all. Wow. Alright, well, I'll still do a little thing, but... Yeah, we are moving directly on to elimination. Okay. Wow, that's very surprising. Very quick. I did not expect to have... Normally have a break or something. Yeah. Alright, there we go. And is there really no way of making this bigger? There we go. Just to make it a bit more visible for you all, so you can actually see what's going on. Alright, so we're going to be having... Black Touching Scatter versus Google Frog and Orpheus is our first match today. Just need to deal with some stuff because, like, seriously, don't start it quite yet. I've got a bunch of stuff to deal with. Sorry about this. Normally there is a bit more of a break between the Swiss and non-Swiss. But without further